Chapter 1 In which we sew a pillowcase with the hem stitched edge. The hem stitch is an heirloom sewing finishing technique that is used as a base for embellishing clothing or household linens. Traditionally, this decorative drawn thread or openwork stitch is done by hand, but today I will show you how to do it with a sewing machine. I will be using 7 eighths of a yard of a quilter's cotton fabric that has been pre-washed, dried, and ironed. I will also be using a wing needle. This is a specialty needle that has a wide end to the tip and it is used for poking holes through the fabric to create an edge that we will later add a decorative crochet element to in our next tutorial. Let's get started. With our pre-washed fabric, I have it folded in half with the selvage edge lined up and I'm going to straighten up both ends. I'm using a rotary cutter and my ruler. This should leave me with between 30 and 31 inches in length. I'm now going to measure across to 21 inches and cut down the selvage edge. I have now flipped my fabric with the right sides facing together and I am going to pin along one long edge and along the bottom. You can sew your fabric with a serger as I am doing here. This sews and finishes the edge in one step. Once you have finished sewing your fabric, you need to finish securing the threads. Using a darning needle with a large eye, I thread the edge of the serger threads in through the eye and I like to weave mine through the back of these threads. I don't need to go down too far. Pull that through, trim off the excess, and now it's secure. But what if you don't have a serger? You can use your sewing machine. First, sew a straight stitch. And then switch your machine to the zigzag stitch at the widest setting. This will finish the raw edge of your fabric and ensure that it does not unravel through the years. You can see the difference in how these two stitches work. Both work exceptionally well, and you can use either one. Now we will turn our fabric right side out to prepare it for pressing. Make sure to poke those corners through so you get a nice sharp edge.
Now to press our seams open. If I were to just simply lay my iron flat here, we would get some really unsightly creases. So we want to open up those seams, pinch them out, and then press. Be careful to avoid your fingers. It may be a little bit finicky, but these are the details that make your project look exceptionally nice. I like to use a chopstick to really make sure my corners are nice and sharp. Being very careful not to poke through the fabric. I also like to put my hand inside the pillowcase and press out along the seam to open it up. That can be an easier and faster way along the sides. Next we are going to mark the open edge as a guide for where we will add our hem stitching. I measure three eighths of an inch away from the raw edge. There are a lot of tools you can use for marking fabric that can be removed with heat or water or time. I prefer to use a mechanical pencil. it is time for us to starch the edge. I have had this starch in my stash for so long, I don't even know if you can get it anymore. I grew up in a household with a father that triple starched all of his shirts, so of course I have some on hand. I quite heavily spray the edge on both sides, but it needs to soak in before you press, otherwise it will flake. So give it some time. You don't need to use spray starch. There are other types of fabric stiffeners and stabilizers, but spray starch is something that's easy to find and typically on hand. Now we press it really well, making sure that all of the starch is dry. I even like to let mine sit after I've pressed it for about five minutes. Now on my machine, I don't have a suitable stitch for this heirloom technique, but I do have another machine for my daughters that has it. If you look at stitch number 22, that's what we will use. Number 27 is also a suitable solution. Set to number 22, I begin stitching along the guide that I have made, making sure to not pull my fabric to hinder the machine in any way. All I'm doing is guiding it so it will stay straight. This takes time and patience. So just turn on some good music or an audiobook and let the machine go. This takes me about six to seven minutes for one pillowcase on my machine. Once we get to the edge, I slow way down because I like to make sure that my stitches line up in the holes that were made at the very beginning. And then I cut a nice long tail and I tie the two threads on top together and the two on the bottom together.
almost finished. Now we need to give it one more really good press with steam to just even out that stitching line that we made. I give it a little tug as I press. There, that looks really nice. Now we could leave the edge like this or trim off the excess, but for a little extra security, I like to fold mine down to the first row of holes and press it down. It takes a little time and be careful of your fingers. It's very easy to burn with that steam. Continue in this manner all the way around and then we are done. You will want to make many, many more. The next tutorial will be on adding a beautiful delicate crochet border to this. See you soon.